All right, hey there guys, welcome back to my channel, Indoor Carnivores. Um, it's been a few months since I've done an update video. I have I have moved uh, since then, and um, in those past few months, I've gotten a few new plants, um, as well as repotted a few, and uh, quite a few have grown quite significantly because uh, warmer weather and stuff like that. So um, I did move states. Um, I am now located in the... Uh, San Diego area, so definitely a lot more hospitable climate for these guys than where I was at originally. Um, although it shouldn't differ too much because they're still staying indoors. So, um, yeah, so I still have all my plants. Um, I do have three of my mature plants outside hanging on a tree right now, so I will not be able to review those, but uh, maybe once I bring them in for the fall slash winter, um, then uh, maybe I can do a little update on that. But um, yeah, so I'll just go ahead and get started. So, um, I'll start off with the front ones here. Um, actually, just I think it was two days ago now, I got this Nepenthes Anermis. Um, this is just starting. I wanted, uh, you can tell it's the lower pictures of the Anermis there. Um, I really wanted to kind of see this go from lower to uppers um, because, um, you know, it just takes more time. I don't want to like buy a plant that's kind of fully established, although it looks really cool, but um, that's just my goal there. Um, Anyways, um, I, so I'm not doing bag acclimation because my temperatures are um, around highland climates with, um, you know, high humidity around 70s um, all throughout. Maybe it goes around the 80s at night, but um, yeah, so anyways, um, I got this off eBay. I came well packaged from this guy um, who sells a bunch of Nepenthes almost weekly. So uh, his name is Picturesque. I'll have his, his uh, shop linked down below. Um, very, came very well packaged, uh, very amazing seller. He even held it for me because I was in the middle of uh, moving. But um, yeah, so uh, then up front, these five, I think it is, these are all from Carnivoro. Um, first one here is kind of hidden by this leaf from my Nepenthes Berkeley Crossamata. But uh, that small one there is Nepenthes Jacqueline cross or special other cross jack linea sorry um definitely grown a lot since i've got it it loves the environment it's in um that's the plant right there uh jumping over one uh you'll see a trombone in the back um but this one is actually i think it's or yeah it's densiflora cross aristoloides um it only has put off one now that it's acclimated doesn't look too cool but uh i believe the mature pictures look pretty nice so that's why i got it and it was only like 20 bucks i think it was um Jumping over, here's my Nepenthes Jambon. You can see it put off one here. Um, it's a little black because I think a mosquito or some sort died on the edge of it and I think it molded or something. So now it's just kind of like killing that side of the pitcher. But it was that was its first pitcher jump. It did shoot one off here. It looks like it's just opening up today. Um, it's still gonna redden off. You can see it has the yellow, um, the yellow leaves from the uh, acclimation period. Uh, they throw off yellow leaves when uh, the leaves were from a different environment, but getting used to it. It does need some temperature drops pretty soon here. Um, it's been, I think about two, three months since I've, three months since I've had it. And it's been definitely in the in the warmer nights. Um, but since, since this is a highland plant, it will need uh, those cooler nights coming pretty soon. So hoping the weather um, will kind of subside. Um, jumping over one is my Rubigia cross Campanulata. I uh, opened up one here, but I fertilized it, so it kind of died. But opened up one here. Uh, probably be open by tomorrow or the next. Uh, Over this one is um, one I'm looking forward to. It's Nepenthes Vichy Cross Lady Cross for Vichy Cross Edwardsiana. Um, you can't. It had one, and it looked very nice, and then it threw off this weird green one. So, not too sure what's going on with it, but looking forward to it in the future. Right here are my Nepenthes Ventrata cuttings. Um, I think in the last video that had just. I had just planted them, but uh, since then they've all struck. You can see them shooting off here. Uh, this main one's doing amazing, and a lot of other ones creating their nodes. Um, so gonna let those stick in the pot for another few months, let them get all rooted, and then um, maybe I'll just keep them in the pot and just let it get like a big bushy ventrata or something. I'm not too sure, and you know, I don't know even know if I if I'd want to sell those anyways because like anybody can get a ventrata anywhere. But regardless, I'm going up front here. Um, this is a true Nepenthes Aime or Aime, however you want to say it, pronounce it. Uh, this one is from Exotica Plants and this is their B Aime. Um, 
I actually have two of these, but this is one I just got recently again um, from Saracenia Northwest. Uh, jumping over one is my uh, Berkey Eye Cross Hamada. I also got that from Saracenia Northwest at their open house. Um, this was, I believe I had this one at the uh, last update I did. Um, you can see uh, one of the pictures right here. Uh, definitely has that Hamada uh, look to it, but a lot easier hybrid vigor. Um, I didn't even do a proper acclimation of this thing. It's kept all its pictures since I've had it. So, um, and it keeps putting more and more off. You can see it's putting one off here. Um, and uh, I think it skipped a picture here. It didn't want to put it out. I'm not sure why, but gonna put one off here. It looks like, um, I think that was the most recent one. But yeah, overall an amazing plan. I would recommend it for anyone who, you know, maybe cannot provide the Highland conditions for a Hamada. Um, anything with the Hamada cross, like um, uh, Berkey Eye Cross Hamada, Rob Cantley Eye Cross Hamada, they seem to show that high, hybrid vigor. So I definitely recommend those for anyone who kind of wants that resemblance to a, to a Hamada. Um, now jumping over one, this one is another one I got off eBay from a different seller. Um, this is Loi Eye Cross VGI, Cross Berbigie Cross VGI. This is an EP plant. Um, it's so far in my collection, it's because I had to repot it, but in my collection it's only shot off one picture, and that was most recently, and that is it right here. Um, looks very nice. Uh, you can definitely see the VGI in it. Um, yeah, so that, I'm very looking, I'm looking forward to that one, seeing how it all turns out. Um, going back here, this one is one of the plants that gives me trouble. You can see it's definitely given off some leaf jumps recently, um, but this is my French Rocosa cross Sibionensis cross Carnculata. Uh, this is an EP plant, so it is Carnculata var robusta. Um, not too sure why it likes to just give me a hard time. I've tried low light, I've tried high light, or you know, higher light conditions, um, higher humidity, and it just seems to only like to picture one at a time. And once one dies off, it shoots off the other. I've never had two pictures on it at once. Um, I've even fertilized it, so not too sure what. It's kind of a picky plant. Um, I don't know. So we'll see. Um, now back here is one of my favorite plants. Kind of looks a little janky right now. Uh, it's got two bamboo sticks kind of holding it up. And this is my uh, Nepenthe Spectabilis cross Loya cross Ventricosa. This is also an EP plant. Looks amazing. I mean, look at that mouth. Um, I think this is probably about almost an eight inch pitcher. I want to say it has another one hiding back here. This is the last one I put out. And uh, I just love this plant, man. It's, it's uh, when I bought it, um, I was like, oh, I can't wait for this to come in, but man, it's really exceeded my expectations. I love it. I got this from uh, Saracen Northwest online when they released it about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. So, um, yeah. Then in between that and the other pot here is my other Nepenthes I may be from Exotica Plants, but I got that at Saracen Northwest. Uh, you can see it does have uh, one right there. It just put off very nice picture. That's probably about three inch pitcher right there from the very bottom of the tendril all the way to the top of the lid. Um, maybe even four inches, honestly. Hard to say, but I've been uh, fertilizing all of my pitchers with Osmocote pellets. I can link those in the description as well. You get them off Amazon. And uh, when a pitcher opens, just put like an appropriate sized one in there with some distilled water to stop it from burning or else they'll burn like this one. Um, and anyways, it's very helpful for the plant rather than doing uh, like a smelly uh, fertilizer, uh, leaf fertilizer um it's definitely helped out my plants a lot i mean very vigorous now very green i love them um but yeah uh now this other pot where this uh ep plant or that my spectabilis loyai ventricosa is um is another i'm not sure if this one was bred by exotica plants but anyways i got it from uh saracen northwest it is a companionata cross loyai or, or is it a loyai cross it's a loyai cross companionata um I also repotted it and it dropped one of its like pictures that it had on for about eight months, I think it was. So it sold the pictures a long time, um, but it shot this one out. If I can, there you go, right there with all the exudate on it. This one loves throwing off the white exudate. Um, I mean, every picture I've had with it, almost just mounds of it. Um, it also has a little one back there. You can't really tell too much, but yeah. Um, now for one more over. Let me adjust here. Uh, one more over. This is uh, my um, Nepenthes Predator. This is also an EP plant. I believe this is Truncata cross Hamada. Um, both the pictures are kind of just chilling down there. Um, you can't really see, but yeah, that's it. Um, I believe that is a cutting, so those are like the uppers there. This is why they're more yellow rather than a dark, darker color. 
Um, but I'm hoping that this tendril puts off one here very soon. It's looking kind of promising. Um, and if it does, I'll definitely do an update video or something. Um, now, one over here, I kind of skipped over this one. This big one here is one of my older plants. This is a Nepenthes peter d'amato, which is just a Briggsiana cultivar. Um, now, uh, it, this one is just grown insane in the past almost like six months. I mean, it is ridiculous. I'm surprised it hasn't put a basil off yet. Um, it's had pitcher jumps, leaf jumps, but look at that. I mean, that is amazing. It's just very obviously waxy like it's a deep deep pitcher and i've tossed a snail in there like a baby snail the other day and uh or was it i don't remember maybe i did maybe i didn't might have been another pitcher but um yeah anyways I, I oh no it was a different pitcher i put a bigger snail in it and it dissolved it all so yeah it's doing amazing now this one here is my nepenthes fancy fish which i also got from saracen in northwest um, they, this one they got from Leilani, which is no longer around, but, um, I got this one cause it was just like 30 bucks. I think it was, and I was still starting on Nepenthes and, uh, doing amazing. So this was, I think it's first leaf jump right here from these tiny ones here. And then it shot this one out and then this one, I mean, it is massive, like for reference, I'm like six foot. So almost like the size of my middle finger, um, very big. And, um, it's putting off one here. I'll probably do an update video when this one pops out, but cause this is an older picture. And uh, it shot off one way down here. You can't even see it. I, I, I have never been able to see it, but it looks massive. It looks so massive. So I'm looking forward to that. Definitely do an update video when that pops out. And this one here is my Nepenthes Gaia. I think this is my first pitcher plant I got. Um, actually, it was my second, um, but I had one many years ago and then I just didn't have the time to take care of it. So I sold it. And uh, anyways, got back into them. And now this is my Gaia. Um, cause I got it for 20 bucks from Saracen Northwest has a basil now. I repotted it. So it dropped its pitchers and, uh, doing really good. Also had a, um, uh, a jump here, but dropped a lot of its pitchers. It was holding its pitchers for months. And then as soon as I repotted it, obviously dropped them. So it's whatever, but it needed a bigger pot. Um, now if I go down here, um, this pot here is my Nepenthe Spectabilis Savior. Uh, very nice. Got this from Saracen and Northwest as well, just recently, actually. Um, this is a brand new one. I th hopefully it acclimates well. I'm not too sure how all that's going to go. It has a tendril down there, but it kind of looks like it's kind of killing it off. Not too sure, though. And then this one, I'm not expecting this one to put one out, but if it does, I'd be happy. And then this one doesn't look like it's going to participate either, but it's the acclimation period, you know. I mean, it's coming from like a high humidity area to a a somewhat lower humidity my ambient humidity um above the tank here i think is around 60 in the day and like 80 at night uh, but in the tank it's always in the 70s or 80s sometimes 90s um but yeah i'm trying to see if there's anything else i've missed oh yeah i did miss one um the other one i've missed was my nepenthes red queen which is the plant that this picture is sitting on um and you can see it kind of tucked away in there there it is that is Nepenthes tibiae, um, but been around since the Victorian area this cultivar has. Just because of its looks, looks like a red queen. It's amazing. Um, putting off another one back there. Uh, so I look forward to that. Oh, oh, another one I missed was my Nepenthes sanguinea. Nothing too special about it. It's just your basic orange sanguinea. Got it for like 15 bucks, I think it was, from uh, Saracen in Northwest. Um, got it because I didn't have a sanguinea and I don't know why not, you know? So that's what it is there. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the quick update video, um, on my collection. Um, you know, I, since moving, they've been amazing. They haven't had an issue. I think a lot of it has definitely helped that I'm in a more humid environment. Only issue is it doesn't cool down as much as night at night. So not getting those highland temperatures. Um, however, it is rolling to fall now. So, um, I do expect, uh, some cooler temperatures, um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully my room cools off more. So um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, I've also had some comments asking how I get them to picture inside. Um, well, one of the one of the things is uh, having uh, a terrarium like this. Um, I got this on clearance from Petco or PetSmart. Don't remember which one for like a hundred bucks, I think it was. And um, it's usually like 200 and something. So that's why I got it. Just remove the top. Um, and then um, basically, uh, 
these doors close and it keeps the humidity in there pretty high because all the water uh, coming out of there um, kind of keeps the humidity low and you can miss it once a day if you want and once you water it uh, water builds up in the trays and keep the humidity even higher now obviously once you pass uh, come in, once they, they come out of the glass humidity will definitely drop um, but currently I'm in an environment that is humidity you know like I said around ambient 60 um, and then at night it's even higher so it definitely helps but um, people have asked like you know how do I get them to hold their pictures so long or how do I get them to picture even um, oftentimes the issue is not enough light and from my experience you can give them a lot of humidity but just not enough light and they just won't picture um, so I have these uh, three grow lights I have here I got them from um, called the bio dude he actually he makes stuff for uh, reptile terrariums and these were actually lights for uh, terrariums and I had an old terrarium that I used these for and I tried it out in my dependencies they work so I bought two more um, and they've been doing amazing um, now they are definitely more expensive uh, lights um, you can kind of see they kind of have almost like a weird oh no yeah they have there you go they have red blue and white diodes um, you know people argue whether having red and blue uh, diodes help with plant growth um, with Nepenthes, they're not too picky. You honestly could go on Amazon and get some uh, Barina T5 uh, tubes or LEDs and um, use those and they have no problem. Um, I don't supplement my lighting. Uh, these are fully grown under grow lights. They may get some sun in the very early morning, but it's obviously not enough. And so this is on for a 13 hour light cycle um, around, so at the, low, the lowest pot here, that's probably about a 15, 16 inches, and at the highest pot, um, which would be my six inch pots, they're probably around a foot away. So um, yeah, it's just all about how much light they get. Humidity is definitely a factor in being able to keep multiple pitchers on at a time, but being able to pitcher requires a lot of energy and they don't get their energy from the soil, they get their energy from the, um, the light, so photosynthesis and um, the food that they catch. So that's where fertilizer also comes in handy. These little Osmocote pellets that I use. Um, just toss one to the pitcher and, uh, you know, let it, do, let it do its thing and it definitely fertilizes it. So, um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this update. Um, maybe I'll do an update on my, um, on my outdoor ones when I bring them inside. Uh, not too sure yet. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little update here. Um, probably won't be doing a full enclosure update in anytime soon more or less it'd just be like little plant updates you know um but um yeah if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities um and uh yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like the video comment anything i should change or do um as well as uh subscribe if you want to see my journey throughout growing the penthes you know i definitely plan to grow my collection to be able to be big enough to have to build my own greenhouse um it's kind of getting to that point honestly but uh yeah so if you guys want to follow me on that journey please feel free to subscribe i would definitely appreciate it um other than that um i'll see you guys in the next video